Let's continue exploring the universe within art and the art within redstone. I'm your host, Om Ledu, and recently I posted another video about item sorters in which I talked about how to move items up and down using item elevators, but I wanted to expand upon that, go into more detail about how item elevators work and how you can build them. So for this video, we're going to do just that. We're going to go over all the different types of item elevators, discuss the mechanics that allow them to work, and go over examples of how you can build them. I will even be going over the fastest clock in the game and how you hook that up to an elevator. That way, if you have an elevator that needs to move tons and tons of items super quickly, you can get it done. I will also touch on how to convert these designs into Java. It is slightly different, but super simple. But okay, let's jump into it. So what is an item elevator? Basically, there are two different sections. There is a clock, and then there is the elevator itself. The clock will power the elevator or droppers in the elevator in order to move items up. And it really doesn't matter what type of clock you build, so we'll be going over some simple designs and some faster ones as well. Now some tutorials will just have you leave an infinite clock powering your item elevator, and I am here to tell you that that is not a good idea. On top of being super annoying by clicking the droppers all the time, you're creating additional lag for no reason at all, where it's super, super duper easy to automate a clock using a comparator that's looking at one of the droppers in the line. Just always avoid infinitely activating redstone. There is always an easy way to automate it. But we're going to start off by talking about dropper elevators. Now there are two ways that you can easily activate dropper elevators. One of them is by redstone, using something like glass in order to work your way up, or you can simply use torches. Alternating between torches and blocks allows you to run a dropper elevator as high as you would like it to go, and it makes it super easy because the only one that you actually have to toggle is the bottom most torch. So here is a super basic example of a clock that is powering this elevator. So this comparator is looking at this dropper, which will then activate the repeater whenever there's any items in the dropper. That repeater will turn off the comparator, thus creating a clock, and will power this other repeater that will toggle the torch on and off. So whenever we throw items in here, it will all just activate. Now there is one slight problem with this design, and that is if the dropper completely fills up for some reason, the comparator clock will not work. So if we fill this up with swords really quick by breaking the clock so it doesn't activate, and once we replace the repeater to connect the circuit, we will see that it will not work. And this is because the comparator can only turn itself off if the signal that it's receiving from the front is weaker than the signal that it's receiving from the side. And there is an easy, easy way to fix this. You don't even need to understand how it works. All you have to do is switch the comparator to subtraction mode and simply add a repeater either next to the comparator or one block away from the comparator. This will ensure that the repeater is always receiving the maximum level of signal from the side, and so it can never receive a stronger signal from the front, even if the dropper is completely full. So just to show an example of this, we're going to fill up this dropper with swords, and when we reconnect the circuit, it will all just work. So just remember that you can always use a subtraction mode comparator with an additional repeater to force any comparator clock to activate. But if you want to compact the redstone a little bit more, it is super duper easy to squish. All we need is a target block to redirect the redstone, and then a couple of solid blocks in order to carry the signal from the comparator. Make sure the comparator is on subtraction mode, just in case the dropper fills up, but the comparator is powering that redstone dust, which will then power this repeater, which will then turn off the comparator and power the torches. And so this is a super simple squished way in order to build this. You know, and it will always work even if the bottom dropper gets filled up. Now, if this clock is not fast enough, like if you have multiple inputs going into your bottom dropper, you can always use a faster clock. One really simple way to do this is by using an observer clock with a sticky piston. And so this comparator, when there's any items in the dropper, will power the redstone, which will then activate the sticky piston, which will then cause the observer clock to activate. Now, I would also recommend only using this if you need a faster clock. So like if you have multiple inputs, like two hoppers going into your bottom dropper, then this will be fast enough to keep up with that. However, if your input is slower, your piston will kind of turn off and on as the items, you know, leave the dropper faster than they are put in. You know, but if you need a faster clock, this is a really easy way to do that. But if you need an even faster clock, this is the fastest clock in the game, and we'll talk a little bit about the clock after we go over this design. 
So if there's any items in this dropper, the comparator will activate, which will then activate that piston, which will then activate the clock. And now this is more so if you need a super duper fast clock, you know, like maybe you have, you know, hoppers going into every single dropper and you have just tons and tons of items going into this system and you just need the droppers to activate as fast as they possibly can. Well, this is the fastest way that you can activate droppers. This clock is the fastest clock in the game. But while we're talking about the speed of clocks, if you're playing Java version, your torches are going to burn out even with the slowest clocks. So the only way for you to do this is to add a tick delay on your repeaters to slow down your clocks so that the torches don't burn out. But as for this super fast comparator clock, I've talked about it in a bunch of my other videos, but I want to touch on it one more time just because it's the fastest clock that you can build. But you can only toggle the redstone from the redstone dust that is three blocks away from the comparator. So where the red blocks are or the orange blocks are, you know, or anywhere past the red blocks, you can actually toggle the redstone on and off. The other ones look like they're turning on and off, but they're actually not. And to demonstrate this, we can look right here. So all the torches on the iron blocks are never actually turning back on because the redstone is never actually turning off. Where all the redstone dust on the red and orange blocks is actually turning on and off. And this only works if the comparator is on subtraction mode. So if you just need a basic clock or you need a super fast clock or a clock that's kind of in between, here are three different designs for you to choose from. Now again, if you're playing on Java version, even the slowest clock is going to burn out your torches. So you again, you need to add a tick delay onto your repeaters in order to prevent that. But then on to the second design of elevator, and that is by using a bubble column. Now I will say that bubble columns create a lot of lag. You know, so I would avoid bubble columns as much as you can, you know, but a single bubble column really isn't going to affect a whole lot, so it's totally fine. And we're going to use the same three clocks as we did in the other design. Now the top section also needs to have some flowing water going toward a hopper with a button above it to prevent the water from flowing out. And it also needs a roof above the water because the items are going to get like thrown through the bubble column way up into the sky. And now this can be kind of entertaining to watch, but sometimes the items can land somewhere that they're not supposed to go. You know, so definitely have a roof to prevent the items from, you know, bouncing really, really high. <laughs> And if you need a faster clock, you could always just use an observer clock, or you could use this super crazy ultra fast comparator clock. You know, now I'm not sure when you would actually need this. Like there's not really an easy way for you to load items quickly into this dropper, you know, but maybe you're actually placing the items by hand or something, you know, but if you use a super fast clock, either observers or the comparator clock, you probably will also need additional hoppers as your output. You know, so in order to do this, all you have to do is kind of surround the hoppers with some blocks to allow the water to flow above them and then place a button at the very end to keep the water from flowing out. You know, this will give you additional outputs if you're, you know, throwing tons and tons and tons of items through the system. This will guarantee that the items all get caught. Now, one way I could see you maybe needing a super fast clock is if you have like a dropper elevator line that are all shooting items into the water stream, you know, and then you're loading all of those separately for some reason, maybe like you have a bunch of different farms connected to this or something, you know, but for this, you would definitely need additional hoppers as your output in order to make sure that you catch all of the items. You know, you wouldn't want one of the hoppers filling up and then the items to start to despawn, you know, since the items are just floating. And while we're talking about floating items, just be aware that floating items cause a ton of item lag and a little bit of block lag as well. You know, so, you know, even items going through containers, even hoppers, provide less lag than just free floating items. Especially if you have a ton of items that are going through the system at any given time, this can really cause lag for all players in the server, you know, or just your world in general. So, you know, just be aware when using designs like item sorters that have free floating items or item elevators that have free floating items, that this is super duper laggy compared to just moving items through droppers or through hoppers. And then our third and final design of item elevator is this block tower. I really don't know what to call it, but if you shove items inside of solid blocks, the items will try to escape. And so if they can't escape to the side directly to them, they will just float up through the blocks. 
And now you don't have to use glass. We'll, we'll go over an example of that here in a minute. You know, I just like using glass so that I can actually see how the items are behaving. You know, since we're abusing item physics, this can sometimes be a little awkward. But again, we have the same similar type of clock where the comparator is looking at the dropper through that solid block and it is then sending power directly to that dropper so that it powers the dropper in the middle. And of course, if you need a faster clock, you can simply use an observer clock, and this is pretty easy and compact to run because of the way that this has to be built. You know, the comparator has to be looking at one of the droppers from the side, and then you have to be sending power directly to that dropper in order to power the center dropper, because the center dropper is in the middle of the three by three tower that you have to build around it in order to keep the items from escaping. But especially when it comes to this design, I really don't see how you would be loading items fast enough for you to need a faster clock. You know, so instead for this last example, we're just going to use the basic clock that we used to begin with, but we built this one out of completely solid blocks just to show that it still works. You know, so you could build this out of dirt, out of cobblestone, you know, any sort of cheap block that if you need a really cheap item elevator, you know, this one is perfect for that. You know, but I will say that since we're abusing item physics, I kind of like to build at least one section out of glass just so that I can see the items. You know, that, that's part of the, the cool thing about this design is that you can actually see the items moving through the system. You know, so I like to build a section out of it out of glass, you know, and then place the water on top to move the items out. You know, and, and it's just kind of neat. You know, now you have a little window where you can see the items going up. And so really, this one is just kind of more fun, you know, but it's also useful sometimes if you can't run redstone through a certain area. But that's all we got for this video. I really hope this helped you out in some way, shape, form, or fashion, and I hope you learned something about item elevators. Let me know in the comments what you're planning on using these item elevators for, you know, or if you don't know what to say, just tell me hi. I would love to hear from all of you. And also let me know what you did or didn't like about this video so that I can improve my video making in the future. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe. It really, really helps me out and it makes me super duper happy. You know, I can't keep making these videos without your support. And with that in mind, a big shout out to all of my subscribers and all of my supporters. It is because of y'all that I can continue doing these videos. So I really hope that I am helping you out because you mean the world to me. I really appreciate all of you. And as always, if you have any questions or requests, simply let me know in the comments and I will do my best to help you out. And in the video description is a link to my Discord. You can join that Minecraft community to share pictures of your builds, talk to me about Redstone, find players to play with, or find worlds to play in. Anything Minecraft related that you would like to do, just join the Discord and talk to me there. But that's all we got for this video, so until next time, I've been your host, Omledu, hopefully teaching you a Redstone trick or two, and reminding you, as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye!